Oh, this is backwards. Hey, internet, and welcome back to another video. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark, and I'm a software engineer. Cool, that's all that's relevant. Today, we're gonna be talking about Todoist, a productivity system app that I pretty much use as my second brain, or at least one of my second brains. If you don't know what Todoist is, pretty much at its core, it's a to-do list app, uh, and its most basic functionality, I guess, allows you to both sort tasks into different projects and kind of put them off in the future. You can tell yourself to do a task tomorrow in six days, have it recur on some sort of pattern, etc., etc. I'm gonna briefly talk about the details of Todoist in a moment, but two central themes that I'm gonna be coming back to over and over in this video. The first main theme is elegant. I think Todoist is a very elegant application and I use that word in the definition of elegance in that it's so simple that you can use it right away, but the simplicity itself can be stacked and multiplied to make it complex. So I'm gonna go over my to-do is set up in just a minute for everything before I dive into how I use it for my software engineering job. But keep in mind, some of this might seem overly complicated. Some of it might seem really complex. That complexity is at a level that works for me right now. It might not work for me in a year. It might not work for me in a month. It might not work for you, but hopefully there's something in here that you can find or take from it and you apply that to your own life, whether it be in Todoist or as I'll mention in the video, how I also use Trello and Notion, maybe you can incorporate some of those things. At its core, everything I do connects with Todoist. Something might only be a Notion, something might only be in Trello, but everything's in Todoist. The second theme going with elegance is filter and labels. Two very simple features that you can combine and once again multiply to have some really complex stuff going on. Let's dive into everything I have going on. At its base view, and uh, Todoist is in Japanese for me, it's mostly English. All my tasks are written in English, but pretty much <laughs> I got a WhatsApp notification in the middle of this. I'll explain everything that's not translated. It's like these five things and you know, that's it. But I have all my projects here on the left. So daily life is broken down. There's categories, you know, for all these projects. I'm not going to explain every single one. On the top left, we have inbox, which is where a task without a project goes. Today, we have upcoming. So this is just like throughout the week. Filters and labels, which we're gonna dive into a lot today. Or at least how it evolves into a bit of chaos and how I make it organized chaos. I do have to do is premium. I'm not sponsored, I'm not partnered, whatever. On a simple view, if I click add task, uh, record a video, could be a task. It automatically assigns it to today because I'm on the today view. If I wanted to make it for tomorrow, I might type tomorrow, which is tomorrow in Japanese for me, because again, my to-do is, is in Japanese, but I'll translate. If I want to assign it to a project, this part's important. Uh, I put the pound sign and I can see all my projects and all the sub projects in there. And then if I do an at symbol, you can see all the labels that I have. And this is where it kind of comes in such that everything combines here in Todoist. If it's not in Todoist, it's not happening. So if I forget to put something in Todoist, oopsie, my second brain, it's the thing that takes all the chaos out of my head and organizes it. When we look at this today list, there's eight tasks on here. It's a little chaotic. I have a work task, a video task, a Japanese task, daily task, oink task. Now I've done some th stuff today. You can see five out of six checked off, okay? So I've done a bunch of things today, but it, it always feels chaotic looking at all this. And that's how I got to this today broken down filter, which I personally kind of made it on a whim and I love it. So at work, we use a program called Jira and I have a an automated Zapier thing such that whenever I get an email and it has the word assignee and my name uh, and it is in the subject line has Jira, in other words, someone has assigned me a ticket. Uh, something gets auto-created uh, over here on incoming ticket. You know, this ticket here, I'll open it up. This was automatically assigned to me. It had a label at first. We're gonna put auto-created on here. So when I wake up in the morning, if someone assigned me a task in that time zone I'm in or I wasn't aware of it, this is where I'll first see it most likely. So we'll come back to that idea in a moment. But if we come back to today broken down, most important, you know, my default activity in the day, so to speak, is work, and then I have a category for language, and then YouTube, and then just pretty much everything else. So if I go ahead and open up this filter, it's pretty simple. On its most simple level, filters, you can effectively say everything that is in this project or in this label. Filtering things down for me is about having as little as possible on screen. So it's my second brain, right? I'm throwing all these things at it. It is total chaos. But when I sit down to do work, I don't want to see all 15 things I want to do. I want to see just work. So I have a filter for just work. I have all the currently working tickets, tickets that are pending in, in pull requests. Any incoming is gonna show up right here. But at the top here, I have, so an auto-created ticket is one that I need to sort. So when I remove the label, boom, it's gone. And these are the tickets that I'm working on today or any, any work tasks I'm working on today. The only thing that shows up in here, which is the reason why you don't see all these other tasks, I'm probably blurring a lot of these out, I apologize, is because of this little at CB label here. So if I go into this filter for work, it's 
Looks a little complicated. And I apologize, the Japanese doesn't really help. Chart boost and auto create. So in my filter query here, just like when we created a task, like I said, new work task, just like I say, chart boost, see how we use the pound sign. And then for the CB label, we do at CB. The filters work the exact same way pretty much. And you can do a lot more with them, of course. We have in the project chart boost and have the auto created label. This comma is then responsible for um, each of these category separations, which is something I found out not too long ago. And then we have chart boost and today and CB chart boost. And then in the currently working sub project defined with the slash, the emojis are my own choice. I like that with notion. I do it with everything now, et cetera, et cetera. And then if we look at today broken down, I've done pretty much the same thing. So when I look at today broken down, I have anything that's tagged with at CB in today. So anything that's assigned for today and for my job, followed by today in Japanese, followed by Portuguese Brazil in today, followed by YouTube in today, and so on and so forth. I have a couple categories, but not all of them show up because not all of them have tasks in them. In summary, for work, uh, I have this thing called the do is that I use for everything in my life. And it makes sense to put work in there because it's part of the chaos of my day to day. So if someone assigns me a ticket, I want to make sure I have visibility on it. Nine out of 10 times, I'm going to check Todoist first before my email. So that's why I have the automation set up. And now that it's in my Todoist, I can then weigh it with everything else. So if I wanted to record this video today, as I am, I've also got the work tasks going on it. And, and everything that is in my day is in front of me. I don't have to spend mental space to think about it or remember it, et cetera, et cetera. And that's effectively how I use Todoist for my job. I think because I use Todoist, I need to incorporate everything I do within Todoist. It's less that Todoist is helping me do my job, but more that Todoist is helping me make my job uh, a bigger part of my life, a more central part of everything that I do. So once I have a ticket in Todoist, all of my breakdowns happen here. So if I go ahead and open up one of the, one of the tickets I've been doing, so there's a front end component to this, and I can I have all of my breakdown stuff. I don't, I don't put all the breakdown on Jira because I don't use Jira that much. We use it in our morning meetings, but that's about it. So I have all these notes to work on. Right now the front end's in its completed stage, the front end part of this, but whenever something happens, so for example, um, we open a new tab to download a file, I thought to myself, it'd be nice if we had a, a message saying what was gonna happen. And I actually, I've already changed that weird set notation, so we're good. And so I threw it in a priority three task saying, not important, but hey, maybe I wanna come back to this when, when the MVP's done, when the, when the main stuff has been confirmed, let's polish it up a bit. So for me, having this breakdown is important because if I sit down and start, which for me is the hardest part of things, everything's here. Everything is decided for me on what I'm working on next. Just today, I was confirming with someone that I needed to ensure that some fields that I was logging are actually valid JSON. Wrote that down, that's priority two. Um, and I think I'll make this P1. So this is effectively the first thing I'm going to do when I sit down and work on this ticket again. Again, that's crucial for me. This is just a system that works for me. We've got a bunch of non-ticket tasks. If it's not part of a ticket or just a thought, it goes in this column. I wanted to do this. We go into back end. I don't like to assign the whole ticket for today. I want to focus on the smallest amount that I need to focus on. If we go to today broken down, work tasks, importing CSV file. Great, I have to fix the error that's currently showing up. The branching workflow, that's done. Uh, I ended up doing a lot more than just that, but importing a CSV file, that's my job. But if I need to go back and see, oh, what else is there to do? Okay, you just, you just go up one level, right? Vibe check the endpoint name, yeah. So Todoist is helping me break down my tasks after it's automatically shown up in here so that I can tackle the smallest parts necessary. And then once I get started, I just flow. Todoist is, again, the core. It helps me break down the tasks, but most importantly for me, it helps me integrate my job in my life because I've been using Todoist like every hour of every day for like four or five years. I think I stopped using it prior to the pandemic. Pandemic came around, started using it a lot more again, and then now the central theme of my life and my second brain. But it is limited. I might be able to make these filters and labels and create these really cool setups, just focus on studying Japanese. This used to have so much more going on, but I can't I can't write PDFs and I can't write scripts. Their board system, it's great, honestly. I have a list for goals, a list for video ideas by category, mind dumps, what's up next on cue. I could make another video for currently working and move a task, to the, but it doesn't feel meant for that to me. There are some things that Todoist doesn't feel meant for. So Todoist is where my whole life integrates and it's great for this, this macro view. And for my job, it's great for breaking down tasks on this very micro view. However, to counteract those limitations, uh, I use Trello. So each video has a status here. Again, just like my job, let's look at the best typing websites, which is supposed to be up like two months ago, but I have a couple of crossed out tasks. Those are done, it's all scripted. I just haven't filmed it or edited it or looked up.
I break down the task in this very small micro view, but the, the video itself, again, it's incorporated in my life because it will show up on the daily view at some point. And then on Trello, this is where I check the general status of a video, just like in my job, I'll track a, a general ticket for work so other people can see it. And to me, this is like a mid-level macro view of each video. But this whole board is very specifically just the channel. So these tasks do have checklists, but these are more reminders than anything. This is to make sure I upload all the proper things for details. This is just a status check of making sure that a video is in the right space that I need it to be. And then in Todoist, I'll break down all the other things. I have Notion, which as we can see has a video script on it. At the base core, it's really simple. And maybe it seems complex when you're an outsider looking in. And again, maybe it's gonna be too complex for me a year from now, but right now it works and it, it, it has its flow. I also have a Notion board for my job. Now this I'm gonna effectively blur out entirely. I have all the points I wanna bring up for next standup. I have a log of everything I do. Ticket notes ongoing here. So relevant to my software engineering job as the title of this video. So that's a brief insight into how I use Trello, Trello how I use Trello and Notion alongside Todoist. But again, Todoist is where these things integrate. I don't do anything for my job on Trello. Yet for my lifestyle videos, I use Trello and Notion. So it's, it's a bit of a mix and match. And I think one of the most important things with Todoist is figuring out how you prioritize. You know, it's so important to me to have this today broken down because everything is in chunks. I use priority based on how much a mental effort is gonna be and or how long it's gonna take me. This might not take me too long, but finally getting to sit myself down and record a video, we're here, we're doing it. Priority and breaking things down is so key. You can have a to-do list. I love written to-do lists. I use them pretty often throughout my day just to know, okay, this and then this and then this. Like a very, for me, it's very important to have a very specific order of things. For to-do lists, breaking down things into projects and then sub-projects for my second brain, it helps me take all the chaos that happens up here spit it into here and then organize the chaos. And once I've organized the chaos, I don't have to remember something that's happening in two weeks. Todoist will remember it for me. So again, if, if you start in the simplest sense, download Todoist or whatever, start in the simplest sense and then slowly explore. What can you use? What can you, what do you want to use? Oh, you just discovered that you can make tasks that don't get checked off. How can you use that? Start simple and your system will grow to fit your need. As you kind of make your needs and you bring your systems to the level of your needs, if and when you fall, I'll slip again, I'll fall, you fall to the level of your systems. I think that's from Atomic Habits or something. So if you can build your systems up from their most simple level over time to something that works for you. I finally got a working system after like two or three years of iterating. Google Calendar, Notion, Trello, Todoist. That's a lot for some people. It's probably still a lot now. It might be a lot for me in a year. If I've built up that system and I fall again, I will fall, hopefully, to the level of that system. That system will keep my habits up, keep my reminders up. And that's important for me. Um, I'll probably make another productivity video like this in the future. If you have anything in this video you want to see elaborated on, I'd love to dig into it. I'm not too big on like complex Notion setups. Again, I know you can do all this in Notion, but I just love to do this. I really do use it for everything and you know, pages sometimes are, are, are too much. <laughs> Life is all about change. So as long as we have something to organize the chaos, we're, we're better able to navigate through it. So thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you use. Any, any tips and tricks you think might help me here? What filters you use? Would love to hear it. And if you incorporate this, you know, show it to me on Discord. Would love to see your setup. But, uh, you know, there's always something to learn from everyone's setup. Controlling the chaos. That's really what productivity apps are about. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. Hopefully, I will see you next week.